Hi everyone, new couch, new city this week. Um, I wrote a post on my personal LinkedIn page last week uh, about authenticity. Um, and the person I was actually talking about in that post is sitting right next to me today, uh, Martin Groshold from uh, Concept House um, Consulting. So we we'll just go explore that a little bit further, how it's made um, Martin and his company very successful over the past, uh, coming up to three years mm -hmm. now in business. And we just want to know, kind of find out why it works for Martin, how it can possibly be applied to other sectors. Um, but here we go. So, Martin, welcome. Hey, to how are you Two doing? Ends TV. <laughs> Two Ends TV. Two Ends TV, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah good. Um, initially, just a bit of background on Concept House, the markets you operate in, the yep. locations. That'd be, cool. That'd be great. Yeah, so Concept House was uh, founded pretty much about three years ago, as you just mentioned, by uh, Daniel and myself. We've now grown to... Uh, nine members of staff. Uh, we're based here in Germany in Munich and uh, we are only working within the transportation design industry. So we find or we help our partners to find, you know, car designers, 3D modelers, visualization artists, like clay modelers that do everything in physical, you know, and everything that goes around pretty much in a car design department mainly. Um, we do a little bit of product design as well, but car design or mobility design as we call it nowadays is uh, is pretty much our main point yeah. nowadays. And that's the niche that we really operate in. So we don't do anything else. We only stay within our little niche. Yeah. And obviously, um, we've been working together, well, pre previous to you yeah. setting up Concept House, but but specifically, we've been working together for the past, you know, four, four or five mm -hmm. months, really. And I think, you know, having come from a traditional IT background, a traditional recruitment yeah. market, which you've obviously worked in before, your approach to engaging with clients and candidates is is very different to how you might traditionally say, it, especially probably in the UK, but also probably globally in terms of the approach to recruitment. Yeah, I think, I mean, you, you know, one has to say we have worked together in the yeah. same company before, so we can like develop that a little bit and, and compare. <laughs> and compare. Yeah, I think that's the big point. I mean, for us, we really see that the traditional kind of ways of how to do recruitment marketing, if you want to say yep. so, which goes via job boards or, you know, the traditional kind of just I'm putting out a LinkedIn post or something like that, doesn't really work in terms of transportation design. Mm -hmm. Transportation design is much more personal. It's much more who knows who. Mm -hmm. um, you have to really be part of the community. So for us and... Um, it was really a, a very, very important point to say, like, look, guys, we need to do something differently. We cannot just be seen as this kind of um, recruitment company that happens to do, you know, car design. I yeah. think uh, that is what still works somehow in IT. Like, you know, you're not working that much on your reputation in terms of IT or like other sectors. Um, whereas within our car design business, it's really about reputation. Yeah. So we we really had to come up with an idea and the direction of just to say like what represents us in the best possible way i think that's the one thing but also what represents the work that we do like you know the work that we you know put back into the community it's not just about you know we pull out the jobs and stuff like that it's actually how can we give back to be you know also respected in terms of Got any examples of, of stuff like that well i mean it started you know with the basic things i mean you know we're regular members of going to you know motor shows and stuff like that yeah. you know we have we're very very fortunate to be now capable of going to all the press days so you go to you know the designers parties you know you do your own events for example you know we're doing a podcast now which is very very immersive within the uh, within the industry which for us is actually we, we don't really see it as a major marketing tool like yeah. you know if something comes out of it it's great but it's there's a passion, the passion there isn't there exactly it's guys, more yeah. about the passion that you can give something back and like you know we have we have i think this skill that is very very rare within the autumn industry anyways it's like you know how to apply for a position you know and this kind of industry doesn't really happen that proactively or it hasn't happened in the last 10 years and now with you know changes in the economy and like you know changes within how the business are run we have more startups we have more chinese or international people you know coming within the in, into the market 
it changes. So this application process is obviously becoming much like it's becoming like a new thing for this industry. Mm -hmm. And this is what, you know, we give back as well. So it's not always that the people have to come to us because we say clearly like, you know, we're, we're not we're a junior for all of these jobs. Exactly. We're, we're, for example, we don't do juniors. I think we only do juniors in very, very clear exceptions. But if we can give that back to them and it's like, look, this is how you apply. This is what you have to look out for. You know, this is this is where this you know, it, it's a very, very natural kind of thing. And it's, it's, it's adding value without really pushing that you want something from it. It's just you're giving back to the industry and something might come from it in two, three, four years' time when these guys have the experience yeah. and you're willing to play that long game, which I think is really important. Yeah, exactly. Do you think that um, the way you approach it to the automotive industry or transportation mm. industry, which which is, from a marketing point of view, relatively easy because of the products and yeah, that you're yeah, dealing with. Yeah. Do you think that can be applied to the other more traditional sectors? Do you think recruitment consultants can do more from their recruitment marketing and other ways of, you know, I, for IT, for example, probably the yeah. most traditional? Can that be shifted? Look, I, from from my experience, and now looking really back from when when I first started, yeah, it, always, it always starts with the recruitment consultant. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the companies... You know, most of them are now expanding onto a level where they are going to be like 50 to 100 people. I mean, yeah. as I mentioned, we're nine people. So yeah. for us, we can give direction from a company perspective what we expect from our recruitment consultants. In everything they do from marketing exactly. themselves and everything. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And also from the passion. I think, yeah. you know, we, we are really looking for people that have a passion Yeah. Uh, in terms of the car industry. Like just have a passion for... For cars, I mean, you know, yeah. we have debates over here where we just say, like, look, I don't like this one, but I do like yeah. it. So, and it's a little bit harder to get someone who's got a passion for Java. I can yeah, imagine. <laughs> I, I, I think that's possible, but it really comes down to the core. I mean, you know, it's it really is something for me personally. Is like if you, as a recruitment consultant, are really interested in terms of what you do, yeah, yeah, you already have a big advantage. To you know, all your other you know. So an, an IT recruiter, colleagues. for example, going on to something like Code Academy and just learning the very basics of Java type yeah. thing will go a long way compared to probably ninety five percent of the rest of the Java yeah, recruiters, exactly. isn't it? Exactly. And then what happens? I mean, it's kind of you know, for me, well, it's it's a very logical kind of step. If I know the basics of what I'm dealing with, I can I can I can speak to a line manager or a candidate or you know whoever who's in that process on the actual topic yeah. you know i'm not just like oh, with you know, authority yeah and then like you know you know what you're talking about you know kind of the bits and pieces that happen in your industry i yeah. think this is becoming much more important i mean we we see that actually we speak obviously to our partners quite a lot and and they always say like oh you know the problem for us is when other people call us they have no idea what we're doing like <laughs> yeah. and we're not it's not our job to tell them what we do we expect them yeah you know to know what we do and I think this becomes more and more obvious and it becomes and this is then it doesn't matter which kind of industry it is I think it is you know transportation design is obviously so specialized there's no there's no need to. for a cold call anymore really is there yeah. because there's there's enough accessibility to information to find out about individuals companies industry trends that you shouldn't be just going in and saying um you know, have you got any jobs or are you looking for a new job? That's that's kind of it's it's dead, isn't it? Yeah, really? that's that's kind of silly nowadays, I think. And and, and but also, it happens. <laughs> but and I think it will never die. Yeah. I think, you know, you will always there will always be someone that does know you no matter how yeah. good you are. Yeah. You know, I think and that's good. I mean, you know, the people should always learn that, you know, the cold call is still part of what we do. That's in my opinion, you know, we read all these kind of posts on LinkedIn and you have these people like, oh, you know, the cold call is that like no, it's just changing. Yeah. You know, like everything that we have done like, you know, five, ten years ago is still there. It just now has a different name. Yeah. Um so I think in terms of the, the general approach is what we do, for example, you know, projectable and something else. 100 percent yeah but you need the people that are seriously interested in that um but also you need to give them the right tools yeah yeah because i think in terms of what we what we do like for good example, cameras and microphones yeah. <laughs> good cameras <laughs> microphones that's a very very basic tool i mean yeah. you know like depending on how big the company is this can be yeah. a big investment can be a small investment yeah. but uh, company you know exactly those kind of things but also you know give them just the opportunity to really do what they think is the right thing, but mm. give them a direction. Yeah. You know, I think this is the right thing 
to really plan ahead and marketing you know to come back to that kind of idea plays a vital role in that as yeah. well i mean we we talk about this a lot like you know marketing uh, from a sales perspective marketing including sales and yeah. vice versa and all these kinds of things for those outcomes of what we want you mm. you mentioned the the podcast which I'm noticing a lot of podcasts actually yeah. on LinkedIn, like recruitment-based ones, are usually from like rec to rec people yeah, right, rather yeah, than yeah, yeah. industry-led ones. But you obviously you do the podcast. You did a live one in Los Angeles yeah. last week and things like that. Do you see benefits to it? You get you get things back from it. You get engagement. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean we. It's it's kind of a weird thing nowadays because we we started it pretty much as a joke. Like yeah. you know we said like look we always wanted to do that. There's nothing really out there so. We said, Let, let's just do it. Um, and we as Eric, who is, you know, one of my colleagues here uh, and myself. And so it's kind of strange now because people come up to us and they're just like, oh, you know, I'm listening to the podcast and like, you know, well done. Like, you know, really enjoy listening to it. And, yeah, yeah. Um, it's, it's this kind of two-way street sometimes. It's like, of course, you know, we, we, we say obviously that we work for Concept Towers and stuff like that. Um, but you have to be careful that people just don't see you as the podcast guys. You know? I suppose that, going back to what I said at the very beginning is is you're very authentic in what you're saying. You're not trying to push a sales message. You you have an opinion and you're not afraid if it's gonna <laughs> if it's gonna annoy fifty percent of your market because it just starts the conversation. Yeah, and yeah. I think and I think I mean everybody who starts here, for example, they yeah. they get you know a number of very, very I think important messages and one of them is you have to say no. Yeah. Yeah. You have to be able to voice your opinion. And I had this um this one kind of incident, you know, like five, six years ago, whenever it was, I think it was five years ago, where I went to the Geneva Motor Show. Yeah. And I um I met the the head of design for a car company. And uh, you know, we have worked with them at that point in the past. And I went up to him and he's like, oh, you know, I'm going to show you the car. And I was just like, okay, cool, yeah. So he gave me a tour of the car. And then he asked me the big question, do you like it? <laughs> and I said, you know what, I don't and I wouldn't buy it. And that guy actually didn't speak to me for like three years. <laughs> yeah. um, and I was, at that point, I was really, really struggling. And I was just like, you know, should I be honest or should I, you know, give them the answer that they want to hear? Yeah. Um, and I made the decision to be honest. And that has paid off, I think, you know, quite a lot because yeah. like that filters down to clients and candidates as well. When you take it back to recruitment, is that you know don't force people into jobs that they don't want just for the sake of the deal yeah. because in yeah. the longer term, it's just and and this is about it. you know you mentioned obviously the idea of authenticity in the yeah. beginning. This is fundamental. I think you know you need to be able to have an opinion. Yeah, don't be especially as a recruitment company like you know where everybody is just competing with someone everyone has the same usp and things like that we're a specialist recruitment company and yeah, you know yeah. how it is like, yeah you know i'm going to give you my team and stuff like that it's yeah. like all that kind of stuff uh, comes all the time no but i i really believe if you if you have an opinion but you can always back it up mm -hmm. you won't have any issues yeah whatsoever and i think when it comes to the authenticity and also to like the marketing i mean you know the instagram stuff that we're doing and stuff like that I mean, you've been around here for the last two days, pretty yeah. much. You know, we are silly. I mean, everybody is silly, you know, throughout the day. And I don't have to be picture perfect on everything that mm. I do. You know, we are not a professional production company for videos or whatever, yeah. you know. So there are minor flaws in, like, the stuff that we do. But that's what makes you you. <laughs> it, it, yeah, yeah, but this is, this is always the point. It's like, you know, for us as a recruitment company, you know, we don't do videos professionally mm. you know we use the videos to share our thoughts so like you know the podcast and stuff like that it's just another tool to to get a message out or to discuss something that let's say the industry doesn't want to discuss yeah. you know and well, they're fearful of discussing because they're worried it might put a few noses out of joint well, type thing, isn't it? look th this is always the point you know like, obviously we all say like you know bad publicity is also good publicity, yeah, yeah, yeah. but um i'm not a big fan of of that, but it's just like if you are capable of discussing with the manager, and this comes back to the idea, you know, know your stuff. Yeah. Um, if you're capable of discussing a topic or something that you would like to criticize with that person, and you can explain why, and you go back and forth, and you can present it in different ways, whether it is video or anything else to yeah. the market as well. Yeah. yeah, and then then it becomes you you become much more relevant. Yeah, yeah? and you also become much more relevant as a as an industry player, yeah, rather than just oh, you know, there's another one that's just giving you. Yeah, the fifth of the day. Well, brilliant. Yeah. 
We should probably get back to planning for 2019. Yeah. <laughs> then. Uh, we should. Yeah. Th thanks for sitting down. Anytime. And um, we'll see you next week, probably. Cheers, guys. Bye. Thank you.